In this video, we're going to take a look at navigating reason. This video is mainly for um, people who have just purchased the program. This may be, you know, you're trying to figure out your way around reason and just don't know how to get to where you want to go or do what you'd like to do. We're going to go over a brief introduction. Um, it may get lengthy. Who knows? I tend to ramble, but I just want you to... Uh, be able to navigate and find your way around reason by the end of this video. So let's just go ahead and get started. Now when you first open reason, this is what you are going to see. Um, I just opened up the demo mode and I haven't changed any of the settings. This is exactly as it was when I opened. So the first thing that I'd like to talk about is by default, Reason is going to load with some effects already uh, loaded in the rack. I personally prefer to choose what effects I want to use. And it's a, if you're just learning Reason and how to navigate, it can be simpler just not to have anything in here in the beginning. So what I'm going to do is go to the Preferences under Edit here. And under default song you see it's, it's by default on template and uh, empty plus effects so that's what we have here the RV 7000s and the echo and the other uh, effects that are preloaded I'm going to change that to empty and then I'll go to new to create a new song and I'm going to close out the other one. So now here we go. This is a bit cleaner. We don't have anything in the rack. We can start from scratch and put whatever we'd like in. So getting around reason, you essentially have four different main areas. To the left you have the uh, browser, which you can open and close by hitting F3. You also have the hide browser button. You can click once and expand that out. We also have, and I'm just going to hit F3 and close that for now. Moving on, we have the rack here. You also have this button to show hide. You can also hit F6, and that will maximize the rack. So that's the only thing that we have here. Now, next we have the mixer, and I'm going to hit F5 and bring that up. You also have the hide mixer button there, and I'll F5 to maximize. Okay, I'll just hit F5 again, and then we also have the sequencer, and I'll hit F7 to maximize. And as with the others, you have the Hide Sequencer button. And there you can access it when it's closed there, or again by hitting F7. So uh, I'm going to hit F6 and bring up the rack. And I'd recommend learning these function keys. It just helps you so much with navigating around. And you don't have to worry about grabbing the mouse to choose these. One other thing to keep in mind is that you can detach these different areas. So if you'd like to, say, detach the rack and put it on a second monitor that you have, you can Control F6, and now you can drag the, the rack over to a second monitor if you'd like. And a new feature in Reason 8.3 is you also still have the browser in that rack. It wasn't like that before, so if I hit F3, we, can then, we now have access to the browser even if we have that on a second window. So I'll F3 and close the browser, and I'll Control F6 to uh, put the rack back in the main window. You can see here we have kind of a tri view. I don't know if that's, that, that, that's what I call it at least, but you can choose different views by pressing the function keys simultaneously. So if I choose, also I didn't cover the mixer, so F5 will give you the mixer here and again hide mixer. Now if you'd like to have a dual view of certain combinations you can definitely do that. 
So if I hit F5 and F7 simultaneously, then I've got the mixer and the sequencer. You can then drag along this border here and adjust how much you can see of either of the two. F5 and F6, now you've got the rack and the mixer. F6 and F7, and so on. You can even hit all three at the same time, and you get this view that we've already seen here. So just know you can hit those in different combinations to uh, change the view. And um, if I control F5, you can see you can do the same with the mixer and detach that and move that over to a second monitor. I'll control F5 and put that back. And let's just take a closer look at the browser now. And I'm going to, for simplicity's sake, maximize the rack. In the mixer area, this is where you choose all of your instruments, effects, utilities. You can see at the very top here. These top items do not go away. These are always there. And this is how you navigate to choose, you know, as I said, instruments, effects, factory sounds, rack extensions, if you have them installed. Uh, you can navigate to different files on your PC there. You can jump quickly to your desktop. Song samples will show you anything, the samples that you're using in your song, recent patches, any recent patches that you've used. And at the bottom, you can um, add your own favorite folder where you have your favorite patches or file locations. By clicking there. The browser can also be resized by dragging on the blue border there. Okay, you've got a search feature here. Um, these are similar to uh, the back and forward button in a web browser, so however you've been navigating, it will just take you back. It will follow the path that you've, you know, just recently gone through when you're navigating in the browser. The uh, I'll go to factory sounds, alligator patches. Now you see this is active, so you can go up one folder at a time, the alligator patches, and then back up to the factory sound bank, back up to the reason eight folder. This drop down is kind of a quicker way to do that. So if I choose factory sounds, Dr. Octo Rex patches, bass loops, synth bass. Now instead of going up one folder at a time, you can just click the drop down menu and immediately go back to the factory sounds. Okay, and of course you've got scroll bars for uh, horizontal and vertical scrolling. At the bottom you have an information area. So if we say go to other samples, chords, and I just select 60s movies, you're then going to have information on whatever audio file or patch that you select down at the bottom here. Also another update in Reason 8.3 is that you have this uh, triangle here where you can close that information area and you have a bit more real estate for navigating your patches or audio files. Now I'll just open that back up. The auto button will just automatically play any sounds when you select them. If you deselect that, then you'd have to press play. And of course, this is volume control for when you're auditioning your sounds. Now we'll move on to the rack here. With the rack, you do have a rack navigator here, which doesn't do anything because we don't have anything in the rack except for the master section and the hardware interface here. Um, so I'll go to Instruments, clicking once, and I'll drag a Thor in. You can drag or double-click 
to load instruments or effects or utilities. And I'll show the programmer just so that way we can then this blue box you can then move this up and down and use that to navigate. The rack navigator can also be expanded out to the side of that wood panel there to make it larger or you can shrink it. You can drag instruments or effects. You don't have to use this one rack here. You can actually place them to the left or right of this center one. So if I go to instruments again, I'll bring another Thor in and I'll place this one over to the right. And you can see there's a little thing there that shows up on there to show that you're moving it to the other rack and not the main one. So now with your blue box here, you can drag to the left, to the right. If you'd like to immediately jump to an area, just click that area and it will go there. You can also grab the wood panel here and move. And of course, you can if you have a scroll wheel, a wheel on your mouse, you can use that to scroll vertically. Apparently there's a hotkey that I've read you can hold down. I thought it was shift or control to scroll horizontally, but mine doesn't work, so I'm not sure what's up with that. Also, with the Rack Navigator, you can hide that if you'd like. You know, I'm using a 15-inch monitor on my laptop, so if you want more real estate for the Rack, you can hide that. And so you'd go to Options, Show Navigators, deselect that, and now you've got a bit more space here. But I, I always leave mine open. Okay, now if we close the browser here by hitting F3, one other thing, one other tip is you can click in a, and I'm actually going to get rid of this other Thor. I'll hit delete, delete all in group. You can right click in a blank area or also on the device as long as you're not clicking on a parameter such as you know the frequency if you click that then you're gonna to go to the editing automation so if you click a blank area here or say within the rack you can also use this area like a browser to then add instruments just as simple as that so let's move on to the mixer then I'll hit F5 and bring that up. As with the rack, you have a um, channel strip navigator here. This one cannot be resized. Let's see if I move my mouse pointer over the blue line there. I don't have the arrows for resizing. Although you can remove that, you can hide it if you'd like under the options. I never remove that myself, but. Just know that it's there. One other thing that could be handy for you if you're just starting out, I know this the mixer can seem pretty intimidating with all of these knobs and different sections available to you. At the bottom right-hand corner here, you can hide that information. So the input section, I'll scroll up here. This is the input. These are all labeled at the top. They have labels, dynamics, EQ, inserts, sends, and the fader. So those correspond with these buttons here. So the input, you can hide that. You can see that it's trunk and you, all you have is the label that's left. Uh, dynamics, you just have the label, EQ, inserts, effects sends, and uh, fader. If you have the mixer detached, you can't hide that, the fader. That won't hide. So just know that you do have that available, that those can be hidden. 
if you, say for instance, just want to work with the fader starting out and hide everything else. Now you can use the mouse wheel to move up and down or the song navigator or the uh, channel strip navigator rather. Um, I'm going to add some audio tracks here by hitting control T. Just to show you that when you have multiple tracks in the mixer, you do then have a scroll bar for scrolling horizontally. You can also, you see our track here, audio track 19 has a blue border. That's the one that's active. If I hit the left arrow, you can then navigate that way, the right arrow to the right. You can also um, hit home, and that will go all the way to the right of the mixer. Home on your keyboard. If you hit end, it will go all the way to the track on the right. You see it's now selected. So home, I'm here at the very end, and end goes to the right. Page up will... Uh, Scroll up and page down will scroll down on your keyboard, hitting those buttons. I'll page down to the bottom. Now, one other area for navigating quickly, say you'd like to uh, work with this track in the sequencer or the rack, you have these quick access buttons here. So if I hit sequencer, this will then jump to the sequencer and to that track in the sequencer. So I'll click that, and you can see that it flashes quickly there, and we're at audio track 23 just from clicking there. If you want to jump to the um, rack, now we are on the audio track device for audio track 23. And this works for the master channel as well the rack, we're at the master section. Now I'll F5 and F7 and scroll up with my wheel to the top here. I just want to take note of something here. With the master channel, if you select the sequencer, there is no track for the sequencer, but if you hit this button, it will create a track for the master section. And there you can put automation within that track, and that's what you'd use that for. So let's move on to the sequencer then, and I'm going to maximize it by pressing F7. At the very top you have the toolbar, which you'll be using a lot. You can navigate through all of these. Just remember that uh, they match to the QWERTY keys on your computer keyboard. So Q will be the selection tool, W the pencil tool, E the eraser, R razor, T is mute, Y the magnifying tool, and U is the hand. And here you have your track list which will show all of the tracks for your audio and any instruments that you have. This is where you record your MIDI data or your audio, if you're going to record vocals or guitar, what have you. That's all going to be recorded here, and you'll have visual representations of the waveforms. Above the track list, you have a manual record. So whenever you select a track, it automatically is armed for recording. You can see here, for this is for recording audio, this is for recording automation. If you select an instrument that you have loaded, that will record, that's record enable for MIDI, that's for automation. If you don't want it to automatically be chosen, just select manual. So that way they won't automatically be armed for recording. Now these two here are uh, global mute and send to deactivate. So if I have track one, say I mute these, 
instead of going in and individually un unmuting, you can just select that, and it will accomplish that with one click. If I solo several tracks, you can just do that. Now if I have an instrument selected and I'd like another lane for recording more information, this is not creating another track, this is creating a new lane, you would hit that. And now you have another lane where you can record separate MIDI information for this Kong kit, but on the same track. This is for adding track parameter automation to a selected instrument or audio track device. You have different options based on what you have selected. So let's take a look at the Thor here. If I select the Thor, then you can choose. These are all of the different parameters that can be automated with the Thor. So let's choose the um, What about filter? You can see now you've got filter one there. And you can record parameter automation for that particular parameter. And you can close additional lanes by hitting the X. You can mute them with that. OK, this just adds a new pattern lane if you are using, say, the matrix pattern device or the uh, redrum. This switches to uh, block mode and this is the regular song view. And this will mute the block automation if you're in block mode. Now, to you've got scrolling here to the right for vertical. You can also use the wheel on your mouse if you have one. At the bottom, you have um, the song navigator, so you can scroll horizontally. If you hold down shift, you can also use that to expand out or in. You can also accomplish the same thing by uh, holding the right. If you right click and hold, it will accomplish the same thing. And you can drag to the left while also expanding or contracting there, zooming in or zooming out horizontally. Within the Song Navigator, you have these representations here. This is the song end marker. So this, we can just quickly see where we are instead of scrolling all the way there. We know where it is. Here you have your left, I'll move that. This is your left and right loop locators. Your song position pointer is here. So you just have kind of a quick view of where the these items are so that you don't have to scroll. Or if you want to scroll to them, then you can get there. You can quickly see where they are. One other thing um, about the track list area here, you can expand that vertically with these magnifying glass tools at the bottom. If you have audio recorded here, you can change the size of the waveform by clicking these. And at the very bottom you have the transport bar and I have a whole video covering the transport bar so I won't go over that. And I'll also be making a more detailed video on the track list and the tools within the sequencer. At the top here, you have the ruler, and um, this just shows you, you know, bars and your beats.
and I think that that is about everything. One other thing, you can hide the transport bar. That's something else uh, if you'd like more real estate, if I can find it. Okay, so it's actually under Window. You go to Window and Hide Transport. You got a bit more space there now. And that's useful if you're you know the the hotkeys for say spacebar starting and stopping. You can hit zero to go back to where you started, hit zero again to go back to the beginning of the song. Five on the numeric keyboard will fast forward, four is rewind. You can hit the uh, decimal symbol to get back to the very beginning of the song. Um, so if you learn all those, then you can. It could be useful to hide the transport bar if you if you know the hotkeys and you want a bit more space for working in the sequencer. And I'll just go ahead and bring that back up. So I think we've covered everything. I hope that you feel a bit more comfortable with the uh, interface for a reason and feel a bit better about finding your way around and getting started with writing music. So. I've got a lot of other videos on different topics with Reason. Feel free to check those out and subscribe if you'd like. Thanks for watching.